Hi, my name is Denise, and today we're going to learn how to stack Cisco 3750Xs that can be installed in the core of your network. This is a finished stack here. So if you see, there's two 3750Xs here with SFPs already installed. The console cable is right on the front. It's a mini USB that can be connected to either one of the console uh, interfaces on the stack. And we'll just turn this around. You can see the uh, rabbit ears, I call them. Uh, installed on the sides ready for your 19-inch uh, rack. These are all standard 19-inch width. On the back, what you see here is this is a stack in a crisscross format, so from port 1 to port 2, port 2 to port 1, very securely uh, put in. This is the power stack cable, so if one of these uh, power supplies over here fails or both fail, the other switch within the stack can take over the power for the stack as well. So today what we're going to learn is how to put all this together, get it ready to install in your network. Okay, step one of the process is you have to get your switches out of the box. The boxes are going to arrive already pre-marked with what is the top switch in your stack and what's going to be the bottom switch in your stack. You'll see them clearly marked this way. It's important how you uh, set these up. Okay, let's take our 3750 out of the boxes. They're all going to be well packed. So each of these will have a cable management kit, two power cables, a stacking cable, and a power stack cable that's really obvious. Take these and put them up out of the way for now. Within the packing that Cisco sends, there's two sides to the top shelf within the box. What you do is you pull this up and you'll see under each side is the two power supplies needed for the 3750X. Take those both out. Set those aside. At this point, your top shelf cardboard should be empty. Take that and set it aside. This is your new 3750X. The best way to get it out of the box is not to flip the box upside down, but to actually Keep it secure, pull up one side, and just pull it out this way, out of the forms. This is a static actual bag, so take this and put it on your shelf. Okay, so all of our components, we're going to take them out of the bag for now before we actually take the switch out itself. These are your stacking cables. Take the ends off. And you'll see there's a black cover on the ends of these. Take those off as well, and that's your actual interface. Each of the switches comes with the exact same number of components and the same, uh, the same type of components. This is your power stack cable. See the different ends there, very stiff cable. Two power cords. The power cords are not the same kind of power cords you would use for another type of switch or a laptop or, or a PC. They're actually notched and specific for these types of power supplies for the 3750s. So if you look at them, you see a notch in the very top itself. So there's two of those, one for each of your power supplies. Take those out, get them ready to go. Out of your rack mount kit, the only pieces that you really need to concern yourself right now are the ones that go with the, uh, the actual rack mount brackets that go on either side of your switch. So this will be your silver brackets here, take those both out. And there's uh, a little bag of flush mount screws that you'll see. You need those as well. The rest of it you can set aside for now, not worry about that. Take your paperwork, you don't need that right now. These are your two power supplies. Take those out of the bag. Okay, 
This is the bottom switch, so we'll start with this one here. We've taken it out of the bag itself. Okay, turn that away from you so that you have all of these open slots in the back, you'll see. Right now there's uh, two silver covers covering the stack mount interfaces. We're going to just take those off for now. There you go. So you can see there's the open interfaces there. These are the open interfaces for the two power stack cables and these are going to be the two slots for the new power supplies. Starting with our bottom switch, let's get all the components and cables connected to this before we move on to the top switch. It's much easier. The power supplies are actually slotted with a connector in the back, so when you snap them in, you'll feel a snap. Using any, pick any of these slots. The power supplies are the same. You slide them in, holding your end here. You can hear the snap in place. To, re to remove one, there's actually a release key on the side. You would press that and pull it back towards yourself. So the snap is actually the release key that you're hearing. Second power supply goes in, same thing, you hear a snap in place. Using your uh, slotted power cords, the one that we were talking about here, uh, what we do is there's a little funny twist that you have to put into them to actually get them into the uh, cable management for the power supply. Is like this, is you kind of round them out a bit. Power supply is fitted and it pushes in place like that. Keep, make sure it's secure. And we'll put the second one in place as well the same way. Put a little twist in there so it doesn't fall out and connect it in. So both your power supplies are connected right now but do not plug them in just yet into a power source. We have to finish setting up the stack before you can do that. Our next step is the actual power stack cables themselves. The, there is no difference between the ends, but if you look, there is a color code. One side is yellow and one side is green. The reason that's important is you have to make sure that you match a yellow to a green and a green to a yellow. That's how the stack works. So we plug that in and screw these in place. Okay, I'd pick the bottom one to start with, so remember that's yellow. Okay, the next cable to install is the actual switch stacking cable itself. If you look at it closely, it actually matches the picture on the back of the switch, the shape of the interface itself. So we'll just get that pushed into place, and we'll screw those in. So hold that in steady, because it's really difficult if it's not straight on. Each of these switches, or each of these screws, I would do a little bit on both sides at a time, and then they'll, they'll go in nice and square. So start with port 2, and then you'll be set to go. Okay, from this switch's point of view, everything is connected, ready to go to put the next top layer switch in place. What we'll do is we'll put the rack mount kits installed on the side of the switches as well. So turn your switch around, and what you need is your, your uh, flat top screws and your Phillips screwdriver. You'll see your rack mount kits here. They're notched on the back to actually fit into place. And if you look at it closely, there's three counter uh, sunk screw holes in here. You should be able to see them through the screw holes on your rack mount kit. So take that and some of your screws here and screw those in place. Okay, now that we have our rack mount kits installed on both sides of the switch here, make sure they're even with each other. It's time to layer on the top switch in the stack. So we'll just set that here, nice and steady. I'll get the other switch. So lay your other switch right on top of the stack. And if you look at it, it's exactly the same as the bottom stack when we started. You have your empty slots for your two power supplies, your power connect cables, and your interfaces for your switch stack cables. We'll have to install the rack mount kits on both sides of that. Okay, now that we've duplicated installing all the cables for both switches, you'll see the power stack cable is installed on the bottom, yellow, and yellow to match. Port 2 on your stacking cables are installed. Everything matches in the back of your, your stack here. So what we're going to start with first is your power stack cable. If you look at them, they are yellow, yellow, and green, and green. Both of them are currently plugged into the bottom interface on your stack. So what we want to do is go bottom to top, bottom to top. So we'll just plug those in, and you'll see that the green interface 
and they're really stiff cables. Wow. I'll just plug that in. Like that, make sure it's secure. Same thing with the bottom to top. So that if you look at it now when you're done, you have yellow, green, yellow, green. If we had more switches in the stack, it would follow the same philosophy. So you screw those down to make sure that they're secure in place. And there's what you end up with in the end. Okay, the next step is to actually install the switch stacking cables and bring your stack together. If you look at the back of your cable, it is a formed outline that's drawn out on the back of your switch again. Both of your current stack cables are plugged into port 2, so we want to create a crisscross in the back for a full bus scenario. So we're going to go from port 2 to port 1, port 2 to port 1. So let's just plug those in and secure them. There we go, and you can tighten those down. Again, make sure you do both sides uh, equally at the same time, otherwise you'll create a, a, a scenario where your interface is not seated properly. So just screw those in nice and snug. Okay, at, at this point, your switch stack is actually together. You've got your Power supplies are installed with your power cables ready to go, your power stack failover cables are in place, and your switch stack is pulled together right now. So we've also put on the rack mount kits in advance. Now that our switch stack has been constructed, let's put in our transceiver interfaces ready to go for connection to the existing fiber that goes out to the closets or uplinks to WAN circuits. So because these 3750 models themselves have just slots, these are actually just slots and they take these kinds of interfaces. These are called small form factor transceivers capable of either single mode fiber, multi mode fiber or RJ45. The way these work, they're proprietary of course to Cisco because this is a Cisco switch. You'll see that they're on the back they have a little slide in interface. So the way it works is the, the hood that goes over the interface is the top of the SFP. You actually slide these in and be very gentle with it. There's no need to press. You'll actually hear a snap when the interface is secure in place. If by any chance you've accidentally put this in the wrong interface or it doesn't feel right, each of the SFPs that you see here come with a little door or a handle. You basically press down the door, it has a, a spring-loaded release on the back, and you use it to gently just pull your SFP back out. So we'll just do that once again. Is You take your SFP, make sure your handle or your door is facing up, you slide it gently into place, press a little bit, and you hear a snap, and your transceiver connection is there. If you need to remove it, just take your handle press it down, use that and gently pull it back out again. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out is uh, the way, because uh, some of these will be shipped to site already pre-configured, you need to install an SFP in the circuit interface. So if the circuit interface is port 12, which will be identified, then you need to have the appropriate SFP in place here before powering up the stack. And another thing of note is uh, Cisco no longer ships a console cable within each of the boxes and the new console cable style is USB based. So if you look closely at the front of it in the uh, robin's egg blue again, it's a mini USB connection. You can connect either the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. And this interface here is a regular USB that plugs into any USB interface on a laptop or a PC, that kind of thing. So at this stage, we're ready to install our switch stack in your core.